Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you how to use the grid fill tool that was introduced in Blender 2.68. This is a tool that allows you to fill a large hole within a mesh very quickly with quads only. Now it works quite simply and I'm going to show you how on a couple of different models here. So let's start out with this kind of deformed plane that you can see that has kind of a sloping hill right here and then a large kind of deep crevice here. And what we want to do is we want to fill this entire area, quads only, with a nice even transition between the two shapes. If we were to do this using the normal tools, we might say start with an end gone, so maybe select everything and just hit F, and then maybe we could start selecting each of the individual vertices, hitting J to connect it, and then actually using the vertex connect tool that was also updated for 2.68, we could connect crossing strokes here. So hitting J, it'll cut through that. So that's also in 268. Um, and we could just continue doing this. But as you start noticing, this is not very ideal because you end up with this very kind of sharp mesh that just doesn't really look very good. It's going to take a while. You know, there's no real quick automated way to do this. It's, it's tedious and it's, you know, the results aren't bad, but it's not going to be great. And like I already said, it's going to take quite a while. So that's one way you could do it. You could also do it just by maybe bridging the loops. So for example, you could select, let me just to get rid of this face. You could select these edge loops, maybe deselect these, deselect these, and then deselect each of the ends as well. And you could hit control E and bridge the edge loops. And then you could go ahead and set some number of cuts in between. And that would actually start to work pretty well. You know, you would get a really nice result. And you could then, you know, make sure that you've got the exact number of cuts right in here and whatnot. And that would be sweet. But what if we could do it in one step? So this is where the grid fill tool comes in. So all you need to do is select two of the border edge loops or the two opposite edge loops in the patch that you want to fill, such as this and this. Number one, just make sure that you have the same number of vertices in each of the selected loops and also in each of the side loops. So this needs to have the same number of vertices as this, and this needs the same number as this. And then when you have those selected, simply hit Control F, choose Grid Fill, and it will just automatically fill the results just like that. Very, very quick and easy. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and we get a pretty good result. You know, we get a nice gradual transition. We might be able to get a slightly better transition using the bridge tool, or at least have a little bit more control over it since it's got the ability to adjust the interpolation. But for being in one step, this is really good. So let's look at another example though, where the bridge tool would definitely fall short. And that is for capping cylinders. So this is a very, very common thing that we wanna do when we're modeling, particularly if you're doing hard surface modeling, is you want to put a nice grid cap on this cylinder because if we're using a subdivision surface modifier on this say something like this let me just select this we'll add a subsurf modifier and then if we were to select this just hit f to fill it with an ingon you can immediately see what we get so something we might do is we might put say an in cap or an edge loop around the side like this which is great but then we still have this big ingon right in here which is not always a problem but it certainly can be a problem and so what we generally like to do is we like to fill this with a grid, what's called a grid cap generally, basically a grid of uh, quad polygons to then fill this evenly. So let's delete this, this face and see how we could fill this using the grid fill. What I wanna do, since this is a circle, we can actually think of this as four segments. Basically, you have a segment like this, you have a segment like this, you have a segment like this, and so on. So you, if you were to turn this into a square, you know, you might grab each one of the corner loops, and not necessarily these are the right ones. Uh, you know, you might get something like this, and you could very quickly imagine that conforming to a square. And that's basically what our grid fill is gonna do. So an easy way to select this, let's just select one of the center vertices here, another center vertice here. Note that there's 36 vertices in this circle. So if I now just hit my control plus, Oh, actually, Control Plus isn't going to quite work. Let's select this edge loop, hit Shift H, and then we can select the two vertices. That way it's isolating to this. So now just hit Control Plus and note your vertex count up here. As soon as this hits 18, then we'll have the correct number of vertices that make up each side, just like that. And now I can hit Control F, Grid Fill, and it will fill that with a nice quad cap. 
So, all right, that's the next one. But what about an even more practical example? So on layer three, I have the, the high poly um, head model from Kent Trammell's Realistic Head Series. And what I've done is I've started to retopologize this model. Now, just for full disclosure, it should be noted that this is already a very, very nice model and I actually don't need to do anything with it. But since it's a nice model, but then also has a bunch of sculpted detail in here, it also makes a great example for retopology. And so that's why I'm using it. But if I were to retopologize this, what I would generally do is I would go in and I would start laying down basically what I would call poly strips, the key loops and poly flows that then outline the topology for this model using just fairly standard facial layout for this. And what you tend to have then is you get all of these strips that you've laid down like this, and then you're left with these big patches in op which oftentimes are just going to be a quad patch. You know, it's just a bunch of quads right in here creating this kind of grid. And so I wanna be able to fill those really quickly. So this is a perfect use of the grid fill. So all I need to do is select one side here, one side here, double check I've got a correct number of vertices. So there's 10, we can see there's three here, three here. So then I can just hit control F and grid fill. We'll fill that right away. I can then, noticing that I have surface snapping on here, I can just hit G to activate a transform. That will then snap it right to the surface. Then I could go down here and I can select all this and I can select this and note that there's three vertices here, two here, so I can just deselect that one to give that three and then there's uh, five and five. And then hit Control F, grid fill, snap it to the surface and let's do this one down here as well. So I can select these first from that strip and I can see that there's five vertices. So then I'll do one, two, three, four, and five. And there's two and two, control F and grid fill. So that makes it really quick and easy to then go in and kind of fill those patches, allowing you to then spend even more time focusing on the parts of this that really matter for then laying down the additional loops to then really kind of, you know, make your topology really good for something like this. So it's just the grid fill, it's, it's nothing new as far as functionality so, so much. You know, it just does what we would normally do and just filling in large, large parts of a mesh with just quads, but allows us to do it in a very quick kind of optimized way that allows us to just make the process a lot less tedious. And so that's grid fill in Blender 2.68. Thanks for watching.